Number 109. Draw the Lewis electron dot structures for these molecules, including resin structures where appropriate. And then we have CS. Okay. So we got to draw the Lewis structure and then the resonance structure if appropriate. Now they say that we have to draw the Lewis electron dot structure. This is just the formal way of saying draw those dots and those bonds, which of course we're going to do. So uh, before we try to figure out if there is a resonance structure here, always, always, always draw out the Lewis structure first. So that's the first thing. Now here between carbon and sulfur, there is no central atom, right? Generally speaking, if we do draw Lewis structures, we always look for the central atom. But you have one carbon and you got one sulfur. So one on the left and one on the right. There is no pure central atom. So in this case, you could just write it from left to right. You got carbon and then you got a sulfur, right? I can't say that this is the central atom and I can't really say that this is the central atom. So this one's just going to be some type of bond. Let's figure out what bond it is. This comes from the valence electrons. Carbon is in group 4A or 14 on the periodic table. So lucky number four, it's got four valence electrons. So maybe one, two, three, four. Sulfur on the other hand has six valence electrons because it's in group 6A or 16, so lucky number six. So one, two, three, four, five, and I guess, well, I guess I'll put them over here. One, two, and one more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I know that a lot of teachers or professors will always make you kind of draw in like a clockwise manner where you start like one, two, three, four. In reality, it does not matter. <laughs> so for me, at least, it doesn't really matter where you draw your dots. You just got to make sure that you have the right number around because you could always rearrange. Okay, so now let's make a single bond and see if each element has the octet. So I'm going to go dot to dot. That's going to be one bond. And let's see. Carbon now has two, three, four, five. This sulfur has two, three, four, five, six, seven. So not there yet. Let's make a double bond. So dot to dot again. Two, four, five, six. Okay. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huh. Well, one has the octet and the other one doesn't. What's going to happen with that? Well, we still need to make a, another bond because what's going to happen is we need both of these to have eight, right? Can't have one have eight and one have, you know, six. So we're just trying out different options. Let's see what happens if they share another one, right? Now carbon has two, four, six, seven. So it's getting there. And sulfur has two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. So this carbon has seven. And this one has nine electrons. Remember the lucky number is eight. So how are we going to make this work? I can't make a quadruple bond that doesn't exist. But if I have seven for the carbon and I have one extra for the sulfur, I got one more to go for carbon and I got one more extra. So in this case, what do you think? Yeah, the one electron from the sulfur is coming over to the carbon side. And this is totally fine. Sometimes this happens where some elements will kind of like lose their electrons because they have more than what they need. In this case now, the carbon has two, four, six, eight, and the sulfur has two, four, six, eight, and we're done. Now, um, there are formal charges here. If you want to pause the video and see if you can find out your formal charges, it's a good kind of review just to make sure that your formal charge game is up to par. Um, I could tell you that this carbon is positive if you do the math and um, the sulfur is actually just kidding. The carbon is negative 
minus one, and the, the sulfur would be a plus one charge. And that's why overall you have the neutral atom. So maybe I'll just put that there. This is negative one, and this is positive one. Okay. Now, here is the Lewis dot electron structure, and let's see if it has a resonance. Now, resonance means that you have delocalized electrons. Delocalized electrons means that they are not local. If you are not local, you're traveling to other atoms, right? Or other towns for us, right? But if you are local, those electrons will stay with their atoms. Now, usually when you have delocalized electrons, you will have multiple atoms around a central atom. That's where you start getting your different electrons that are moving. But here, we have just one, you know, one set of bonds. We just have a triple bond. And we also have the carbon and the sulfur with charges, right? We tried to make sure that this was the best possible example of the octet rule. And the best possible answer has charges already. Now, just know that, um, generally speaking with Lewis structures, you won't really go past a negative one. So when you start having compounds that have like negative two charges, negative three, go back. Something happened. The same thing with positives. If your element has a plus two or a plus three, go back. Something happened. So these already have charges on them, and we tried to make them the most stable. These electrons are not going to be going anywhere. So for this molecule, this has no resonance. And it's only just one representation. And that's the answer for this one. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I hope you're doing well out there. I hope you're staying safe. And I hope you're studying hard. I know you guys are though, right? You guys are on this channel. So keep, keep up with the videos. We love to help you guys out. My brother and I would thank you so much um, that you guys make the channel what it is. So keep rocking on. I'll talk to you soon. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.